Hello and welcome to the Candlelight Podcast where I, Muhammad Abdullah, talk about different topics including some of my favorites which are movies, martial arts, and philosophy. Let's start with this, this week's quote, guys. Those who stand for nothing fall for anything. A quote uttered by Alexander Hamilton who was one of the founding fathers of the United States. Now, this quote has, I've heard it a while back and it's stuck with me because of how true it is, obviously, and uh, how powerful and important I believe it to be. Those who, st- who, those, who, those who stand for nothing, those who have no principles, those who don't have any values, mabada, qiyam, those who stand for nothing, fall for anything. Those are the people that just have not adopted any values, any principles to base their lives upon which they would not compromise on. Those people will fall for anything. And these generally are people who are not very well respected in society, generally, for obvious, for the obvious reason that they don't really have anything to be, re- to be respected for. They don't have any principles to uphold. Hmm, what example can I give you off the top of my head of s- such a situation? Hmm, those who... Stand for nothing, fall for anything. Well, I could give you an example of parents who uh, try to raise their kids. Uh, If you are a parent who wants to raise your kids uh, in the way that you think is correct, if you see that the growing trend of, let's say, the age of which that you are trying to raise your kids is something that's not uh, really suited to what you were raised upon, what your values are. Now, what you have to do is either, is one of two things. One, well, first of all, you have to do one specific thing and then you have the choice of one or one of two things. First, you need to evaluate whether or not this new thing, whatever it is, let's say it's a new uh, phenomena that happens during the time of the kids that you did not experience in your own childhood. Uh, and you have to like evaluate whether or not this thing is good or bad for the children. Let's say, for, uh, to make, give you a more concrete example, smartphones. Should we give smartphones to kids? Or should we raise them like our parents raised us by not having smartphones as children and having to go up and then get smartphones as you were more of an adult? Now, I personally have gotten a, smart, a smartphone when I was 13. I was not a child, but I was not an adult. So I can't really uh, bring myself into this situation, but I can theoretically think of it and think out loud. Um, so my parents' generation obviously did not have smartphones. They didn't have cell phones until they were like, and they're well into their adult years, well into being parents. But then my generation, we were kind of tasked, you know, tasked, uh, well, our parents were tasked on whether or not to give their children smartphones now because smartphones became the thing. It became very prevalent. It became almost like a necessity instead of a luxury. So now our parents, uh, my generation's parents, had to make the choice of whether or not to allow the kids to have smartphones, which gives you access to the World Wide Web anywhere you go, which is not exactly a good thing. Now, this is the question, right? Is it a good thing or a bad thing to give your child access to such a you know, device. Well, we did not have to think about this before, you know, us as humans, as, as a society, because we did not have something such a, as powerful, as, as strong as, you know, as, as, you know, crazy as smartphones back in the day. No, we had different things to worry about. But now we have smartphones. So should parents give their children smartphones or not? It depends on the principles they want to raise their kids with. Giving a child a smartphone may not be the best thing for them, or it may be the best thing for them. That's the first thing that we have to do. We have to evaluate the situation and decide whether or not this is a good thing. And now, once we have made a decision whether or not it's a, it is a good or a bad thing, we have to decide whether or not we follow and apply that, you know, and adopt that as a value. Like, let's say smartphones are a bad thing for a child to have. Now, all of my child's, uh, let's say, classmates and peers have smartphones. 
should I give them a smartphone as well because their peers have smartphones and are, the child will feel left out if I didn't give them one. Should I give them or should I, should I give it to them or should I not? Well, now if I decided that, that this thing is bad and it should not be given to the child, no matter what peer pressure there might be, then that's a principle I have to uphold. If I don't uphold it, then I'm not really standing up for what I even what I even believe in. And what's to say I'll stand up for anything, you know, uh, bigger or smaller than that? And uh, I bring that up. It's like, yeah, um, it may be it may sound insignificant with this example. It's just a smartphone. That's what some may be thinking, but it really reflects how you uh, apply these principles in your everyday life, like these kinds of decisions and beliefs that you have uh do you believe this thing is good okay so will you adopt it the way you believe it will you behave the way that you believe if not then why not because you believe it to be true or you believe this thing to be good or to or for you believe it to be bad why aren't why isn't your act why aren't your actions reflecting your beliefs well i would say that if you don't, you know, because according to this quote, and which I, you know, buy into, if you don't behave the way that you think, the way that you believe things are, uh, like, let's say, I'm trying to articulate this. If you don't behave within accordance to your beliefs, then you are, you know, valueless, uh, valueless in the sense of, that you have principles, but you don't even apply them. And that's not a good thing. That's not a good thing at all. In fact, it might be the worst thing, because from my, my experience, I think the two worst things that you could do and the, the two worst things that you must avoid at all costs um, in this life are really two things when you boil it down. Laziness and cowardice. If you're too lazy to apply what you believe in, that's bad. If you're too cowardly, cowardly, to apply what you are believe what what you believe in, that's bad. A mix of two is even worse. That's what we have to like make sure that we um, take care of really. Well, at least that's for my temperament. My temperament, uh, it's kind of possible to slip into laziness and cowardice, and I should fight myself and not allow that to happen. It's a daily thing that you have to struggle with. So those who stand for nothing will fall for anything. If you don't have even uh, if you don't even act upon your own beliefs, how do you expect the rest of the world to comply in the sense that they understand your point of view? Like, I believe this thing is wrong, but I don't act as if it's wrong. So how's the, how's the rest of the world going to, you know, understand my point of view if I don't really display my point of view, you know, through action? So food for thought. That's an interesting quote that I've, you know, read a while ago, and I really really kind of thought about really just you know kept ringing my head and was a good quote and of course any good quote i use it here in the podcast try to benefit you guys just as i benefit myself because obviously first and foremost this podcast is for me to help me first and foremost and then everyone else because i'm just as in need of it of this advice and motivation as anyone else so it's not like i'm here talking to you guys from an altar from a top of a you know uh, what do you call it? A podium. Even though it's not a bad thing, it just kind of uh, assumes that I'm better if I talk to someone and give them advice. That's not the case. That's definitely not never the case. It's not that I'm better or worse than the person I'm talking about, talking to. Um, which in this case, I guess, is you guys. It's just that hey, I need some advice, and as I talk to myself here, talk to myself literally here on this podcast. Why don't you guys uh, benefit as well if it is beneficial? I hope I'm not wasting your time because these are valuable minutes that we have here. We don't want to really waste anyone's time. Anyway, moving on. I saw two good Disney movies recently, you know, these past two months. Two pretty good Disney movies. One was Pixar, so technically a Disney movie, but not exactly the same studio because, you know, the other one is Walt Disney Animation Studios. So the first one I saw was Pixar. I, I want to talk about it a few, uh, of like maybe a few months back, 
but I didn't. Maybe like two months back uh, that I watched it, but I kind of didn't because I didn't have enough to say about it. And funny thing is, I don't really have enough to say about it right now because I wanted to rewatch it again to really absorb its message more because I didn't feel like I did so sufficiently the first time. So I really wanted to do that before I talk to you guys about it. So I'm not going to really speak of it right now. Sorry for getting your hopes up and dropping them down. Uh, I'm going to talk about the other one. So, oh, um, the, the first movie that I saw two months ago was Soul from Pixar. You know, was a really good movie. I'm going to get into it uh, hopefully at another time once I truly absor- uh, absorb what it's really trying to say. Because, man, that movie had so many layers that I don't feel like I even scratched the surface of. However, I do feel confident enough in speaking about the movie I saw recently this week, which was um, Raya and the Last Dragon, you know, the new uh, Disney princess movie. Now, of course, it's a Disney princess movie. What am I doing as a 22-year-old man watching it? 22-year-old grown adult male watching a Disney princess movie. Well, first of all, these movies are art. Disney movies are art. They're not for one gender or another. (laughs) Second of all, I was thinking, I took my sisters to watch the movie because, you know, I just wanted to take them out. Uh, you know, uh, let them, you know, go to cinema, have a good time. And uh, I took uh, I took them to this movie because it was there. I was like, yeah, perfect. Disney princess movie. That's awesome for you guys to watch. And uh, that's what I did. Took them out, showed them a good time, you know, and enjoyed uh, the movie with them. And uh, man, it was a good movie. That was a good movie with a lot of good messages in it and uh, a great way to display. It's funny. Funny thing is, I kind of worked with the same exact theme of this movie, you know, which is trust. You know, trusting each other is the key to um, flourishing, is the key to success. And that was the basic theme of the movie when you boil it down. I worked with a very similar, very similar, if not identical theme, and but in a much, <laughs> much much smaller scale obviously this is a full-blown disney animation movie i'm not gonna make anything in my college years that's remotely close to that but but i did make something pretty cool and uh, it was just this uh, animation this mini animation like it was no more than 15 20 seconds long of you know that kind of displayed in the most abstract way in the very in the very in a very abstract way in a very simplified way how trust helps us succeed, helps us flourish. So yeah, I basically did something very similar to a Disney movie. That's what I'm trying to say. And this movie actually, it really showcased that theme in a very good way, you know, in a very um, fitting way. I really enjoyed it. It was, you know, it had... All that you'd expect from a Disney movie, which is, you know, um, side characters that are funny and quirky. Uh, well, the main character. Oh, that yeah, that's the thing. Oh, one criticism. Um, oh, I didn't. I was going I'm thinking of a criticism I have of the movie, but I think I should really uh, talk about what's good about it first. The storytelling was good, not excellent, not the most, um, not the best. But it was really good. It got the job done and some, but not like perfectly, not as good as I've seen other Disney movies do. And I really enjoyed just the visuals, especially. I really enjoyed how well the, uh, like the illustration and the animation was. That really, that's always something that's always gonna look good in a Disney movie. They always like ace that. Hmm, it's just a story. The story is of, of a princess who, uh, this is really complicated because it's weird, it's very fantastical. It's a story of a princess who's, uh, who's a part of a kingdom that is part of four other kingdoms, I believe, that are disjointed and they're fighting over something that the, main, the protagonist, the main character, the princess's father has the other kingdoms are fighting over something that he has 
that is protecting the world from darkness, basically. And the fact that they can't unite and share this thing among themselves is the problem. And the father tr is trying, the father, the king, basically, is trying the, to get them to unite as one kingdom, but they won't do that, and that's what causes the problem in the movie. Uh, the darkness kind of sweeps them over because they can't unite upon this. You know, they just won't have unity and trust. That's the problem. And from then on, the movie really goes on and, you know, what happens happens. I don't want to spoil it. Even though it's like, am I really spoiling it if I tell you the ending? It's a Disney, it's a Disney princess movie. What do you expect? Everyone to die at the end? <laughs> Come on. I know you guys are smarter than that. <laughs> All right, anyway. So the movie was pretty good. I was I enjoyed it. My sisters enjoyed it. But me and my sister, well, one of my sisters had the exact same criticism of the movie. And it was that the main character was not unique. The Disney princess was not unique. She was not her own character. She was just, you know, a template used by, you know, Disney writers to create Disney princesses. What is this template, by the way? It's basically... The main character is this rough and tough, you know, warrior princess who can fight and is awesome and is quirky and is funny and is witty and is not, uh, you know, f does not follow the traditions of her family. She's kind of like her own, you know, thing, you know. They think they're making a neutral character that's not following any traditions, but they're just making a Western character, you know. Some a girl that basically kind of lived her life in you know, the Midwest of the United States, and then is, like, somehow mid magically projected into this, like, fantasy setting where everything is traditional and medieval. You know, like Brave, like uh, this movie, like Moana. You know, they're all these three, these three princesses. What's her name from Brave? Uh, Merida, and uh, Moana, and... Uh, what's the princess in this movie? Uh, Raya. Moana, Raya, and Merida. They all are the same exact character. It's the same exact character, just copied and pasted into different cultures. I don't want to listen to my parents. I kind of do, but I have to do it my own way. I need to find another way. I don't need no one to tell me what to do. You know, that's the whole, you know, personality. That's the whole gist of it. They're not new. Let me tell you something. Belle in Beauty and the Beast, she was unique. Pocahontas was unique. But for some reason, these princesses nowadays are all the same. You know, they're just, uh, you know, cut from the same cloth. It's basically the same princess, just in a different setting. That's a criticism me and my sister had. You know, she noticed it too. And I brought it up and she was like, yeah, you noticed that too? I was like, yeah, it's, it's, that's what it is. But anyway, that's just me uh, ranting. You know, got well into my podcast. So now you got me ranting. And oh, what else do I talk about in my podcast uh, by, the, by like the last 10 minutes? Oh, that's right. The sport of MMA. I talk about what goes on in the UFC generally. So, um, what is going on in the US? Oh, yeah. So, we don't have a, a fight card this weekend. We have a fight card next weekend. We have, you know, what was supposed to be uh, Vittori versus Till, but uh, Till pulled out. So, I think Kevin Holland is filling in. That's what I think is going on. And we've got the week after that. What is it the week after that? I think it's the week after that or the week after the week after that. Uh, we've got UFC 261, which is the pay-per-view. Usman versus Masvidal, who does not deserve another title shot. How does Masvidal, who, ba who the last person he beat is a barely ranked Nate Diaz, how is Masvidal deserving of a two back-to-back -back title shots? Having been dominated in the first one. Okay, yeah, you can make the excuse that he... Okay, it's not more. It's not an excuse. It is a valid reason that he didn't do as well in the first fight against Usman because he didn't have a proper camp. But come on, at least let him fight someone, get a win before he fights Usman again. What is the? What is this? What is this matchmaking, Dana? What are you doing? 
This makes no sense. This just makes no sense. Anyway. Uh, Leon Edwards is fighting as well. I'm um, not sure when, but who is he fighting again? He was... He was... Uh, Put up against who? Some guy in the top. Dude, who is he fighting? Oh my god, how did I forget that? Oh shit, I gotta look this up. Let me just get my phone real quick. Leon Edwards is fighting someone. Who's he fighting? Who's he fighting? Uh, UFC card. Let's check this out. Ah, uh, alright, so in between uh, Vittori versus uh, Holland. And the FC 261 uh, pay-per-view is going to be Wh Whitaker versus Gastelum. Awesome fight. You know, it was, supposed to be, it was supposed to be Whitaker versus Costa, but Costa pulled out so it's against Gastelum. And this is one of those fights where I just really, I really do not want either of those guys to lose. Both are just really cool guys. I don't want either of them to lose. It sucks that one of them has to. But hey, that's a fight game. Anyway, who is Leon but, oh, that's right. Leon is fighting Nate Diaz. Nate Nathan Diaz. He's fighting Leon Edwards. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That's a good fight. You know, let's see how, how well... I think uh, Leon will, gets this. But let's see how well um, uh, when Nate does against a guy who's his own size, who's an elite top five contender in that weight class. Let's see how he does. I don't think he does very well. But anyway, so you got, ah, man, this fight of Usman versus Masvidal, you know, it's a rematch. It's just nonsense right now. You need to, man, you need to do something before you fight the champ again. How are you just getting title shots handed out to you? That's just so unfair. It's unfair to Leon. Leon's on an eight-fight win streak. And Stephen Thompson. Stephen Thompson. Man, this guy's been looking dominate, dominant lately. And yet, here we go. Masvidal. You know who beat Masvidal? Stephen Thompson. Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy beat Masvidal. Yet, Masvidal gets two title shots while Stephen is just in limbo. Top five limbo. No one wants to fight him. They might... Oh, no, actually, that's not true. Gilbert, Gilbert Burns verbally agreed with Stephen Thompson to fight. You know, they kind of agreed... Sorry, I just need to adjust my seat. They kind of agreed to fight verbally. They, they didn't sign anything. And speaking of signing anything, Dustin Poirier and Conor McGregor did sign their contracts to rematch, to have a trilogy fight, a rubber match. That's pretty cool. Dustin's going for that money. And Conor... Well, he doesn't deserve uh, a fight with Dustin Poirier right now, especially how after how he got outclassed in the last fight. But, you know, Dustin's not going for the belt. He's going for the money, and that's fighting Connor, which is smart. The belt is there, but Connor would not always be there. So, and as for the vacant lightweight belt, as I've said... Oh, sorry. Uh, Charles Oliveira is fighting Michael Chandler for it. And that's going to be a cool fight. Even though I, again, I said this before and I say this again. I do not think Michael Chandler deserves a title shot right now. He needs to fight. He needs to win at least once more against, I don't know, who, who's a good fight before fighting for the title? Oh, oh, I don't know. Justin Gaethje. Justin Gaethje deserves a fight in the top five against someone like Chandler. And whoever wins between those two gets to fight Oliveira for the title. Come on. I don't know why they didn't do that. I have no idea. It's such, it's such weird matchmaking nowadays. You know, these past... You know... Like, these past few weeks, it's just some, been some weird matchmaking. I don't get it. I don't know why they did it. And, oh, I'm really excited. I really hope, uh, however, that John Jones fights Francis Ngannou. I would love to see that fight. I'd be really hyped for that fight. Um, I, re I would really like to see that. And I really hope it happens. But John Jones is being a bit demanding. He's asking for over, well over $10 million for this fight. For this fight alone. He said 
he literally said ten million dollars is way too low for this fight for a fighter of this magnitude, which, uh, come on, John. If you did everything that you did with no with no you know with no uh, positive test results, I would have I would have backed you you know because you would be technically the one of the one of the greatest if not the greatest fighters of all time, but you tested positive numerous times. You're not a guy I'm gonna get behind. You know I'm not you're not a guy that I'm gonna support in whatever you do. And come on, Connor's not even being paid ten million. Habib's not uh, had. Was not even paid ten million. You think you're gonna get that? You think you're gonna get more than that? We'll see what happens. In the words of Dana White himself. Anyway, speaking of martial arts and fitness, yeah, I, I kind of just made a leap there, but hey, I want to talk about this. I have been an enjoyer of exercise, of workouts in the past few years, and I feel like I've gotten some good experience in it. I feel like. I have done well, but I really didn't do as much as I need to in these past few years. Um, I haven't been as fit as I needed to. I haven't been as, you know, lean as I wanted to. I haven't been as, you know, my diet hasn't been going as well. I haven't, I haven't been consistent. That's the thing. Some days are really well. Some days aren't that well. They're good. So I really need to be more consistent. And I'm thinking, why don't I start a fitness channel? Something, maybe not even on YouTube, just something on Instagram, perhaps, you know, something small, something that kind of keeps me accountable to just do, you know, a workout every day and just like video it and put it on Instagram, something like that, you know, a fitness channel, which kind of inspires, well, first of all, it inspires me to work hard and to grind every day to produce content and, you know, gives me a responsibility, just like this podcast I have every week to, that I need to, uh, Post this. I'm not missing one week ever. Uh, I hope this podcast just goes on forever. And I hope it just gets, gets better from now on. And I really want... I'm thinking of starting a fitness channel. Uh, on uh, Maybe on YouTube. But now let's think Instagram. Uh, keep it small scale. Instagram. YouTube. Where I just kind of, you know, post a daily thing where I'm working out. Where I'm doing something. And something that kind of tests myself you know, in the sense of, you know, working out and being disciplined with regard to sleep, with regard to uh, food, you know, so I could get my results. Now I'm not really in the best shape. I could get in much better shape if I committed more. And that's something I really need to do. And I think starting a fitness channel may help, but I need to think about it more. I thought a while before I started this podcast and it's been, well, it's only been 12 episodes and I've only really got one listener. But it's been pretty good so far. I'm really enjoying it. I'm really, you know, uh, kind of looking forward to recording every week. It's 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 a joy. It's not it doesn't feel exact necessarily like a chore. You know, some days it does, but it, it shouldn't. I really try to focus that. You know, I really try to just enjoy myself here, not take it to you know way too. I want to say I don't want I don't want to say that I shouldn't take it too seriously. I should take it seriously. It's something that I'm. You know, I'm putting myself out there in the world. I should be taking care of how I uh, come across. But I shouldn't take it, you know, as something that is, you know, world-ending if I fail at. Which is not something that you could really fail at. I'm just opening a mic and talking every week for 30 minutes. So that's the thing. I really think, you know, I'm thinking of maybe opening a fitness channel. Um, what do you guys think, whoever is listening? Uh, I think... Uh, I should do that. It's just going to be fun. Be posting some clips of me, you know, just chilling, working out and talking, talking to you guys through my workout. You could do it with me, for example, and things like that. Stretching, martial arts, fitness, weightlifting, calisthenics, whatever it is. Anyway, so I've taken enough of your time. This was the Candlelight Podcast by yours truly, Muhammad Abdullah. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you guys come back for more. And once again, Those who stand for nothing fall for anything. See you guys in the next one. Peace.